We're happy to be here with Marissa, and uh, she's come all the way down from uh, Hayward, California. Yes. And uh, we want you to introduce you, yourself, and pronounce your last name, okay? Because <laughs> I've tried to do this, and I haven't been too successful. But anyway, we're happy to have Marissa here with us. And okay. uh, why don't you tell us a little bit of where you're from and okay. uh, a little bit about your, your background. You know, I, I know you're a teacher. Right. And then also uh, a little bit about your health condition, too, as well. Okay. Well, my name is Marissa Melgarejo. I'm from uh, Northern California, Hayward. Mm -hmm. And I've been a teacher for 25 years. And um, Wow. Yeah. You don't look old <laughs> enough to be a teacher for 25 years. The children keep me young. I they thought you were 25 me. yourself. God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so I've been uh, so my 25th year and uh, now work with four and five-year-olds in uh, preschool. Mm -hmm. And um, this year in March, March uh, 14th to be exact, I was diagnosed with a rare form of cancer, breast cancer, a sarcoma. Right. And um, I was told that the only way to, you know, rid this was through a mastectomy and then followed by radiation as there was no chemotherapy for this type of cancer. Mm -hmm. um, so I was in total shock. You know, I right. thought I was living what was, a, you know, a balanced life. Um, went home and, um, you know, I was still in shock. The next morning I woke up and knew there just had to be something more. Uh, the way the surgeon was describing the procedure, they would do a mastectomy, they would be doing some kind of covering and a suction on it, they wouldn't be putting any skin on it, I would have to go through radiation, and then after they would consider some kind of um, reconstructive flap. But at the time, the tissue around my breast was dying. It was gray, it was purple, mm. um, and so they were going to have to remove so much skin about probably like two inches below my clavicle, all the way around. So it was, um, it was pretty horrifying, you know. And then when the reconstructive surgeon had walked in, the two surgeons were, just, you know, speaking among themselves. I was still in the room, <laughs> but they were speaking as if I wasn't there and describing all these things I had to do. And, you know, and the more I heard, I was just, you know, I was horrified. And mm. went home, the ne you know, that uh, day, woke up the next morning and, I had read your book several years ago, and I was drinking the green drink, but hadn't made a, a change in the diet. Um, and I just picked up the book, and I, I I turned to a chapter and started reading. You know, went to the went to the back of the book in the index and looked at every page and read about cancer in the book again, and then found the page where it uh, mentioned the ranch mm -hmm. here in California, and I made a phone call, and then um, two days. Later, I was on a plane and I was here. Wow, that's quick. Yeah, because I knew it was right. I just, mm. in my heart, I knew it was the right thing. It made so much sense to me. And it made sense to me when I read the book so many years ago. Mm. But for some yeah. reason, it just making that transition seemed so overwhelming at that time. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, what I'm doing is okay. You yeah. know, it's, it's okay. But it wasn't because during, the, during those years, my body was giving me signals that it wasn't okay. Um, Were you having some symptoms? Well, yeah, I was. I had. Can, I was diagnosed with candida, uh, mm -hmm. can, and candida, and then I was fatigued. I mean, I, I taught, mm -hmm. you yeah, know, and you I were it was. Yeah, but I came home. I was exhausted, and so yeah. I'd, I would come home, lay on the couch. That was that was my day. Um, but no pain or no. You no didn't pain. notice a lump. Or? Well, I had a history mm -hmm. of benign cysts. I had them oh. taken out, but they were oh, okay. always benign. They were oh, always okay. benign. Um, and, you know, until this past year, but, um, you know, there are other things like my husband and I tried to have children and I couldn't have children. Mm. And so, you know, there mm. were things that were happening that, yeah. you know, I didn't put the puzzle together. Right. Now, when I look back on it, all the pieces start falling together. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, you know, yeah. now it makes sense knowing what I know now. Right. So I knew my body was giving me signals. So the sarcoma diagnosis, uh, there were multiple tumors in the right breast? Correct. Um, what had happened was one of my students had, um, he was running to give me a hug, but his head came first and, and hit my breast. Mm. It, it hit, hit me so hard that it knocked the wind out of me. Mm. Um, and then my breast just swelled. And so then one of the tumors, it was probably like the size of a grapefruit. And the other mm. one probably 
maybe like the size of a baseball. So there uh, were there were yeah. So it was. Um, and there was some yeah. lymph node uh, involvement too as well. Yes. Yes. So they were thinking about taking you know from the clap two inches from the clavicle Correct. down the skin, the breast, yes. and then of course uh, also taking multiple lymph nodes. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. And so. Um, and then when I came here and started the treatments, well, the first thing I did, you know, having my blood tested, I mean, I was in shock when I received the diagnosis of the cancer, mm -hmm. but when I came and you tested my blood and I saw my blood on that screen, I thought, oh my gosh, what have I done to my body? Mm. I just thought, what have I done? There's something and, about seeing the universe within. Oh my gosh. And your own blood. Because yes. you usually don't mm -hmm. see your own blood no. when you go to a conventional no. uh, Western traditional right. medicine. You just get the counts. Right. You know, they'll mm -hmm. tell you, oh, this is normal. You yeah. know, every, you know, this is all normal. But were your cancer antigen uh, titers were they up? Were they showing like the CA fifteen three or twenty seven twenty nine? I only had that when you when I okay, came. Okay, so here. we ran we ran those those right. blood tests and right. they were elevated. Right, the proper blood tests and that's the mm -hmm. first time that I had ever heard of that. You know, <laughs> no one had ever spoken to me about that before. And that was something else I saw that was amazing is in the first week when you had first taken those tests, they were in the double digits. And after only uh, being here for seven days, right. the blood tests were done again and they went down to single digits. Right, so they went back into to normal range. Right, you, right. And you also saw some reduction. Uh, and here again, just yes. so those who are listen, listening, yes. this is not a chemotherapy treatment. No. This is a diet change and a yes. process of hyperperfusing the tissues with alkalinity. Yes. There was a reduction in the size of the tumors. And, yes. And what happened to your skin? The skin, well, as I mentioned before, was dying, and after doing the, the di being on the protocol and the diet for only a week, the skin started coming back to life. Mm -hmm. You could actually see the color just change mm -hmm. back to normal. And, mm -hmm. and the other thing as well was the breast size was changing because we were measuring it, and it was actually getting smaller. And then when I had come also, um, for the first time I had been introduced to thermography, which I wish I had known about before, which mm -hmm. is a great alternative to the mammogram without the radiation. Right. And I had visually seen, you know, what the cancer looked like in my breast. And then... So you saw the size of the tumors? I saw the size you and... You saw yeah. the inflammation that was yes. also expressed. Yes, and I saw the inflammation of the tumors. I saw the inflammation in my lymph nodes. And after every week I was here for five weeks, I could see the changes in thermography. I could see the tumors changing. I could mm -hmm. see the lymph nodes, you know, improving. And it was just amazing. Mm -hmm. And so I had to, to give you some hope. Oh my gosh. That, you know, you could turn this around. It, it was it was literally a miracle. And I have to say that when I made the decision to come down here, I I, it, I put my whole heart into it. I mean, you know, my husband was not on the same page. He he mm -hmm. was horrified. You know, and I had to really tell him, I didn't tell him, but I booked him a round trip ticket. Mine was only a one-way ticket. And I had told him, I said, just give me, just meet Dr. Young, give me a weekend, mm -hmm. come see what, you know, my blood looks like. But I had already known <laughs> that this was, this was the plan I wanted to do mm -hmm, because it made right. so much sense to me. And I knew that once he met you, and then started seeing, but then actually he ended up staying for two weeks. And then when he started seeing the results, he said, you know what, you're good. You're so even fine. his health improved while he was here. Oh my goodness. He must have dropped 10 to 15 pounds. He radiated. It was amazing. And mm -hmm. he just glowed. He was going through detox too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did he yeah. like the food, or was he, he struggling, or was no, he, was he, he doing okay? No, he, yeah, he did fine. Good. Yeah, he That's did good. fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, uh, are you continuing on with him? Or are you guys staying on the program? Absolutely, the whole family. Even my father, who's going to be 91 um, wow. in a couple of weeks, he is now, um, you know, we're juicing, he's drinking the juices and, you know, the soups, and yeah, so the whole family has gone. Great. Yeah, the whole That's family's great. gone green. Good. Yeah. So it's been about uh, three months yes. since you left the ranch. Yes. Uh, tell us a little bit about after you left the ranch, uh, what happened? 
Well, when I went home, we decided that because the breast was so large, um, that to have surgery would would be a pro- you know the proper um, thing to follow up. But because of that, be- um, when I had the surgery, the tumors were well encapsulated, the margins were well and clean and clear. They had they didn't have to start you know cutting you know below my clavicle and that they were able to do the reconstruction right then and there. No lymph nodes were affected. They didn't have to remove wow. any lymph nodes at all. That's encouraging. That's amazing. And yes. uh, <clears throat> no recommendation for radiation after. The surgeon did recommend the radiation. Mm-hmm. She did, and I had spoken to Eric and I said, I, I'm not gonna do the radiation. Um, it makes no sense to me to mm-hmm. put this into my body when the very thing I'm trying to do is to alkalize my body and give it everything it needs. And it makes no sense to destroy everything I worked so hard to do here at the ranch and then just, you know, take that and tear my body apart. So I, I, I did not do radiation. So how much uh, of your own personal faith, uh, you know, was applied in, in the success? I mean, your emotional state and the faith that you had to, right. to, to go ahead with this type of an approach. Right. So much, yeah. I I really learned to listen. You know, I thought I had faith before, but but now it's just it's different. You know, everything. Um, my spirituality has changed, and I've really learned to listen and to listen to my body. And when I came here to the ranch, I have to tell you that every person I met here just gave me a gift. Every time I from the you know the staff in the kitchen to you know, the people who maintain the, you know, our rooms, to people who are maintenance, to, you know, the coaches, and especially the two of you. I'll never forget, Shelly, what you said to me. You know, you said, you know, this is just a, a stumble in the road, you know, and, and, and you know, your faith will get you through, and I'll never forget that. And also talking to you too, Dr. Young, you know, every day you would come and, you know, be so positive. And just, I remember you talking about how much thinking how much your thoughts have so much to do with the healing process. Mm-hmm. And so my personal faith, you know, has, has um, played such a large part in this. And then just being around people who support that, you know, here at the ranch. And it's, um, it's been such a gift. You know, they say that, that even though how horrific, you know, mm-hmm. the disease and the diagnosis was, I, I have received so many gifts. And one of the gifts... You know, I'll never forget what you said, too. When we sat there and looked at my blood, you know, you said, Marissa, sure, you could have the surgery, you know, and they might remove the cancer and all that. But in two years or so, you'd be right back, you know, sitting in front of a surgeon, you know, with cancer someplace else. And so, you know, I've learned so much. And what else I loved about being here was it wasn't like fix me. You know, when you go to the physicians, it's just they fix you. But here it was... You know, if I wasn't doing my treatments, I was learning. You know, I was mm-hmm. learning about my body. I was reading. I was watching videos. And I was educating myself. And I was taking, you know, personal responsibility for my health and not giving it to someone else and saying, here, fix me. And that is, that is probably one of the biggest gifts that I've received. Because now, for the rest of my life, you know, I am so empowered mm. to take charge of my own health. And to know that I am responsible, you know, and uh, that I have to thank you for that. That's just a huge gift. Well, thank That's you. beautiful. I, mm-hmm. you, you know, it reminds yeah. me of the saying, physician, heal thyself. Yes. We can all become our own yes. uh, caretakers. We can take yes. care of this temple, this body that right. we have ourselves. And I'm really touched at the fact that you're a teacher, yeah. that you work with young kids. Yes. To, uh, pre-kindergarten. Yes. I don't know how you do that, but, um, <laughs> you know, I'm wondering, you know, once you've been helped, you usually want to give back. Yes. And you're with these kids now yes. all day long, and you see what they eat and drink, mm-hmm. and you see what they, they get sent mm-hmm. for snacks. Mm-hmm. How do you think you're going to be able to affect this next yes. generation? Yes. I am so passionate about this now, and sometimes <laughs> I have to contain myself because, you know, um, yeah. But it is true. Um, you know, it, it really concerns me with the children and the generations that are coming up, with the right. things that I see, um, the processed food that these children are eating. And these are children of educated, 
you know, parents. Yeah. These are not children from, you know, low income. These are, you know, yeah. um, both parents are working, but the food they eat is just uh, very rarely do I see children coming in with vegetables, you know, or fresh foods. Everything's processed or fried or parents will even bring in, you know, the fast food for lunch. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so I am so excited about starting in the fall because I am going to bring in my Vitamix. I'm going to bring in my juicer. We're going to be, you know, doing the nutrition curriculum a little bit differently, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and um, cool. Shelly's giving me the, this wonderful bag. I'm so excited. <laughs> Dr. Rock so the rescue. <laughs> I'm so excited about implementing this. And, and children respond so well. And it, how exciting yeah. me is, you know, to use the juicer and see the vegetables going in. And they get to push right. down and seeing this out. And, and you know, it. yeah, we have a little, you know, area in our uh, school. So, you know, start planting vegetables that they can actually, you know, cool. maybe juice them and use them as snacks. Yeah. And um, getting them excited. And then... Um, using things from this to change the curriculum, yeah. you know, like you were teaching me about how the broccoli looks like, or the cauliflower looks like the brain, and the um, tomato looks like the heart, and children really relate to those things, you know, very mm -hmm. visual, right? you know, and just, um, you know, if you're excited about something, they get excited, That's so true. I'm so excited, you know, I'm yeah. so excited about, you know, the food, and the other thing I'm excited about is the exercise, because now I've learned how to exercise the the right way and how to breathe the right way and then I can teach the children you know we can do the rescue breathing or you know the love like the the fire dragon breathing breath of fire breath of, breath of fire, fire. Uh -huh. and they'll love those names so they'll yeah. get excited you cobra know. breath and uh, yeah and the other thing recovery that recovery breath yeah uh -huh. mm -hmm. and the other thing I'm so hopeful about to introduce is is that maybe the parents, you know, because yeah. whatever children learn, whatever they're passionate about, they go home and they start saying, you know, this is what we learned in school. And, you know, this is, you know, what Ms. Marissa said. And um, yeah. because so many parents, you know, they take, maybe their child is so active, you know, and they take them to the pediatrician. The pediatrician at four years of age mm -hmm. says, oh, you're, you know, they're probably ADHD or ADHD. Yeah. Then they're placed on medication, you know, mm -hmm. and the parents, you know, they feel like, and well, then you have know. to teach that child all day exactly. on medication. Exactly. So actually, yeah. so much of the responsibility falls on you as a teacher. And yes. I congratulate you. <laughs> and I'm, I'm so excited for you to, uh, to take all the blessings that you've received from the program and then yes. pass that on to these kids. And I do think the meeting with the parents might be really good yes. to, uh, to approach it and have them yes. gather and tell them what you've, right. your own experience. I would tell your own story and say, I care about your kid's health. I do. And I then, do. Uh, take it from there and introduce do. Doc Brock and see what happens. I, I I'm excited. I do. I love the children as if they're my own. Yes. And so you would. Um, I do. <laughs> I do. And so that's um, great. Yeah. So I'm really excited. Oh, bravo! Yeah. <laughs> I've got a, a couple of other questions okay. because uh, it's been three months mm -hmm. since we've seen you. Right. And uh, your energy is so much better. Yes. Mm -hmm. And oh goodness, the sparkle yes. in your eyes, your yes. skin, you, yes. you, you radiate, you're vibrant. <laughs> That's true. I, I have to ask you, what do you attribute that to? Oh my gosh. Everything that I've learned here, the foods, you know, changing from what I thought was a good diet um, to the alkalizing diet to learning how to exercise properly mm -hmm. to proper mindset. You know, all of that combined together, and um, yeah. That's good. And we had a chance to also look at your live blood. Yes. How did that look? I was so excited. Yeah. <laughs> it, so much it, better. It, oh, my gosh. I just, I, I cried. It's just um, really? so exciting. Neat. Yeah. When I, when I first saw the, the blood, I, I think I was more, as I mentioned, more horrified to see that than the cancer diagnosis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then when I saw it this past uh, week, I was just like, oh my gosh. It just, you know, and it just affirmed every de decision that I made. You know, because there's always that voice, you mm -hmm. know, in the back of your head that says, what are you doing? Yeah, you know, the what doubt. are, you? yeah, the doubt. Mm -hmm. And I just had to dismiss that, you know, mm -hmm. and I had to really listen to my heart right. and really follow that. Right. And, and the doors just started opening, you know, and that, and that to me, you know, was God just saying, you know, yeah. this way. You know, not this way. You know, this door is opening. Knock and so, it shall be given, that's right? That's right. Ask and you shall receive. That's yes. great. Yeah. And we, all, we also got to, to see your dry blood, too. Yes. And there was a huge difference there. I huge think change. Initially, 
Uh, we, and we can see it here. Yes. Uh, where the proteins were in the center and there yes. was uh, problems with the digestive system, Correct. particularly in the, in, the, in the lower bowel. Correct. And yeah. how, did that, how did that change? Oh my gosh, the first time I saw those huge pools and I had no, no, no line, fiber. In no that. fiber. Yeah, so the None. blood was yeah. more hypocoagulated. It yeah. wasn't well co coagulated. Yes. yes. And, I, and my, I had no edges. There, was no, there were no edges and I, I was horrified. And this last week when we looked at it, it was. It all, was the, all the white had, had yeah. uh, vanished, yes. disappeared. And the color was so vibrant mm -hmm. and I had never seen anything more beautiful in my life. Right. <laughs> it, was, it was the most beautiful thing I ever, I've right. ever we, seen. Right. We That's checked great. your hemoglobin too, as well. Yes. What, what, what was your hemoglobin when you came? Do you remember? Oh, Lord, it was so low. Right. It was so low. I can't remember the exact number. Uh, it was under it was 10. So yes. And then we tested it again uh, it was, just uh, recently here. Yeah. And it was normal. Yeah. It was in the 14s. Even, yeah. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And the hematocrit, the hematocrit was good too as well. Yes. So your blood volumes, yes. so the body's producing yes, all good, that, healthy blood now. And all that beautiful chlorophyll <laughs> <laughs> every day. And I've continued. I've continued on the liquid feast, um, certainly after the surgery. Mm -hmm. I had, I knew I had to clean up from all the, you know, yeah. medications they had given me and just the acidity of the surgery, it's, you know, causes itself. Mm -hmm. But, you know, um, something happened, you know, the, during the liquid feast. All of a sudden I just felt this shift in my body. And it's like now my body just craves the greens. Mm -hmm. And people will say, oh, you know, you poor thing, you know, you can't. And I say, oh my goodness, no, I have never been happier in my life. Do not, do not in any way feel sorry for me. I, and if I ate this way for the rest of my life, well, which I will, I mean, just doing the liquid feast, I would be perfectly content. Mm -hmm. I'm, it, I no longer have to worry about food. Like food had this hold. I was always worried about, you know, weight and, and things yes. like that. And you know, to consume so much energy, it's just to, mm -hmm. that that food has this hold on you. Yeah. And now I feel so much freedom. I feel so much freedom doing the liquid feast. So I have to ask you, what is your favorite vegetable and what is your favorite <laughs> fruit? Well, my favorite vegetable is probably the broccoli, doing the broccoli soups. Okay. Favorite fruit, hands down, avocado. I mean, I eat probably four to five avocados a day. And wow. I just eat them. I just cut them and just spoon them. I don't, we don't even make, yeah. I don't even make guacamole anymore. I just, do, you, do you put salt on that too? Yeah. Oh yes. Oh yeah. And salt lime, is a big part. Lime. Yeah. And so, I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> so would it be say eating four to five avocados a day, salt, yes. green drinks, broccoli, mm -hmm. lots of oils. Lots of oils. Yeah. yeah. Well, you don't look protein deficient. Not at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> <You don't laughs> Not at all. I yeah. have more more energy than I've ever had. And is your husband going along with this? Is it? Is it? Yes. Okay. So yes. you support each other. Oh, he's, do you feel he's like awesome. you can go out to dinner at a restaurant and navigate the menu and Absolutely. make it work? Yeah, Absolutely. I've already hard. been. No, I've already been to several social events. Yeah. And I just bring my my just bring my you know shakes with me, and I bring my green soups. And the beautiful thing now is. I don't have to worry about the food. I focus on the people. Yeah. You know, so you're really, you're present with the people instead yeah. of worrying about food and worrying about, oh my gosh, if I eat this, I'm going to gain right. such a freedom. <laughs> like, this is great. That's great. I'm a yeah. woman. I know what she's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. There's a lot of pressure there. So. It is. Oh, yeah. Well, we're so yeah. happy How for exciting. you. This is Thank such you. a wonderful story. Very nice. And Thank you. you're so wonderful to, you know, share it with, with others. And we're you're so going to help a lot of people out there. I hope so. Yeah. I just want people to know, you know, if the prayer is that they would find this before, you know, so that you can live a healthy. But if something were to happen, mm -hmm. that they're not alone. Yeah. You know, you're not alone. Yeah. That there's this wonderful program that can, you know, change your life. And, right. um, you know, and then I just have to thank the two of you for, you know, just empowering me and just sharing your passion and now you know it's so contagious and now I have that and hopefully can like you said can help others you know oh I'm sure you yeah. will thank okay. you for coming thank you nice to meet you Marissa thank you thank you Marissa thank all you. the best thank you